Nardi Chimbo, so the Nigmisha, so the Molem Chimbo, Abjata, Pakartang, and San Tushir Mado, Tomba Tugji Chanla, Kipshang Tar, Shawm, Chuji, Anji Pavdana, Tism Sanji Kinjingo, and Ransom Churkung on some tons of Savela Man, Amla, Kipshang Tar. First of all, I would like to welcome to my teaching all of you again. Um, and I also would like to say uh, thank you to <coughs> Bob, Jirme Tobdan, uh, and Heather, um, and Martin, uh, Kate, and other, I think we have uh, for people volunteers um, that help that you have sort of provide to get this uh, uh, everything ready for this retreat. So uh, thank you all of you. Thank you very much. Uh, and I'm um, also <clears throat> thank you very much uh, to all of you uh, for coming this retreat. Uh, and I'm also uh, very happy that um, to have this good opportunity to talk about uh, the stages of meditation. Uh, stages of meditation uh, is about um, shamatha, actually, shamatha meditation and vipassana meditation. Uh, and uh, I um, would like to share uh, with uh, all of you, my um, practice experience and uh, my understanding about uh, Buddhism. Uh, uh, in this retreat, uh, I will teach you uh, how to practice about shamatha, uh, how to practice about vipassana, because uh, uh, these two, the uh, uh, the topic, the stages of meditation by um, uh, Kamala Shala. So, um, just to let you know that we have, uh, we're going to uh, have a short retreat, um, uh, one and a half day. Uh, I'm glad that you can uh, come. And uh, very nice to practice uh, shamatha vipassana together as a group. Good energy, and uh, I like to see uh, people. All my students, uh, I like people. So uh, wonderful, very nice, mm -hmm. and I'm very happy. Uh, I think you are very happy. By the way, good morning. Um, and uh, yeah, um, so when you read it with a group uh, uh, or meditate uh, with a group, it is important uh, that uh, you create the best possible condition for your retreat, for your meditation, right? Uh, of course, you know all of this. Uh, uh, you are not, uh, I think, new people. You hear lots of teachings. You have done lots of meditations. So you have some uh, experience. Uh, so that's good. So make sure that uh, while your body is here um, in this retreat, in this um, room, and make sure your mind uh, does not wander uh, back home or someone else, uh, make sure that your body and mind uh, on the cushion at the same time. Um, uh, that's uh, how you do. That's that's the kind of uh, good condition, you know, uh, for your meditation. Um, uh, so your body and your mind should be focused on the same thing. Otherwise, it will be difficult uh, to control our minds. 
Um, so, to start, there are two points. Um, how to sit and what kind of attitude uh, we should have during the meditation. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> you may wonder why meditation practice that <coughs> deals with uh, sort of mental states uh, needs to be concerned with the physical uh, posture. Mm. So the answer is uh, that the attention is connected with the um, circulation of energies, right? You all know, know that. So these energies are depends upon the uh, condition of uh, your channels. Are uh, uh, the the uh, depends on your channels, and your channels um, depends upon the posture of the body. You know that's why they are these are sort of rela related to each other. So therefore. Uh, it certainly follows that physical posture does matter and uh, uh, makes really difference when you meditate. Um, Papa Rinpoche said, uh, if you want to sort of attain a quietness of mind, then you need to focus on your physical posture too. Um, so that's why pattern which you always say, make sure that your body is on the cushion. Make sure your mind is in the body. You know, uh, so that's kind of, you know, outer and inner conditions of your meditation when you meditate. So uh, you sit in comfortable very important when you meditate. Just to let you know, of course you have this experience, but comfortable, uh, very important. Just sit in uh, comfortable, make sure your, when you meditate, your back straight, very important. Because that's I just told you, right? Your channels and your energies depends each other. So it depends also your back, you know, when your body posture, make sure. And make sure your shoulders, you know, uh, just to relax and uh, uh, open. And, uh, uh, and then one of the most important is correcting your motivation. Uh, uh, this is the first, uh, you know, we just start. Uh, I am teaching, make sure my motivation is correct. You are listening my teaching, make sure your motivation is correct, you know. So, uh, you should feel I am uh, so sort of uh, fortunate to have this uh, perfect human life, right? Precious human body, uh, in uh, which I have the opportunity to uh, practice and to listen, to understand. Um, so, this is uh, you just kind of you need to. Uh, remind you know yourself and you appreciate it uh, your life that you have this uh, amazing life and uh, uh, and uh, so therefore uh, no matter this is you know this is how you correct your motivation uh, I mean most of you know but maybe some are new so uh, no matter what samsaric uh, experience I have during this retreat, during this meditation, uh, by the good or bad, I shall control my mind and this retreat benefit for myself and also for other beings. So that is the correct motivation. That is the, that we need motivate, you know. Uh, so this is how you correct when I say your motivation uh, in general and uh, uh, especially for this retreat. Uh, I, mean, uh, I always say that if you have wrong motivation, then uh, it, it's not really bring lots of benefits. So if you have a, a right motivation, uh, even though you meditate very short time, it's lots of benefits. 
bring to you lots of benefits. So that's why uh, your postures, uh, these are good, uh, important, but the most important is uh, the correct motivation. Um, and uh, <clears throat> uh, you have understand all that, you know, and then um, what I'm going to teach you at this retreat uh, is based on the stages of meditation, right? Uh, because I think uh, uh, many of you uh, studied uh, the, the book, The Stages of Meditation, uh, during your meditation session. We have like uh, two uh, times, right, meditation session a week. And I'm sure you uh, read a lot of uh, the stages of meditation, this book. This book is really good, especially there is a commentary. Uh, it has a commentary. Uh, uh, it's uh, the Dalai Lama, and he's, uh, um, he has a lot of experience how to teach for the Westerners. Uh, so it's very easy to understand and uh, very, uh, I think, I, think I, I actually mentioned that, right? Um, you should read this book and then discuss about this book. And then not only understand this book, but you have to meditate on it. So that's why this uh, uh, the teaching is based on the, uh, the Kamala Shilas, um, the stages of meditation. So I mean this will be, uh, this will be very good for your practice. Uh, and as you know the stages of meditation by uh, Kamala Shila uh, and uh, Kamala Shila was an uh, uh, Indian master. He was uh, the great scholar of the, uh, uh, the ninth, I think, ninth century. Uh, and uh, he was a student of the great master um, Shantakirta, Shantakirta, Shanta, you say Shantakirta. Uh, so uh, the Kamala Shila uh, is a great Indian master. So uh, when uh, his root teacher uh, was the Shantakarta, and uh, when Shantakarta passed away, uh, and he told uh, Kamala Shila that uh, uh, when dispute or the argument uh, in terms of view would happen in Tibet, and uh, you have to go to Tibet, uh, that Shantakarta told him, you have to go to Tibet and uh, reestablish the, uh, the purity of the teachings. Uh, that's why uh, Kamala Shila went to Tibet. And then he wrote this, uh, actually three parts of the stages of meditation he wrote in Tibet. And so, uh, I mean, which are the, the first uh, is uh, initial stages of meditation. And the second is the Inter intermediate state uh, stages of meditation, and then the third is the last stages of meditation. So he has three stages of meditations. So among the three parts of the stages of meditation, this is um, the the middle part, uh, which is we are going to. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to teach all of that, but it's actually kind of thick book. But you know, uh, just uh, I will teach you the important things. Okay, so uh, people are love. People really like uh, the stages of meditation. Okay, uh, um, and lots of people really practice because it's uh, it's uh, uh, lots of uh, shamatha, right? Uh, information uh, and then compassion, <coughs> lots of compassion and also the Vipassana. So I think uh, uh, most of you already studied this book, good for you. And uh, I don't know how far you go, uh, maybe half? OK, so that's good. Actually, the Vipassana is down, 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 down. Maybe you uh, haven't read that, but that's OK. So the stages of meditation. Uh, and this teaching actually uh, described many levels of meditations and uh, how, uh, how a, a spiritual path can be developed 
and how should you understand about emptiness also and wisdom. Uh, he talks lots of their things and especially talk about how to meditate on shamatha and vipassana. Uh, and there also, you know, uh, are there so many different uh, levels of meditation in uh, the three uh, his teachings, his, his books. Uh, especially the, the subject of the second stage, the, the stages of meditation, the middle stages of meditation are uh, the uh, tranquility, the shamatha, uh, and vipassana, or we call the clerci, uh, cl uh, what do you call it, clerci, or spatial, spatial insight. Um, and uh, uh, people, uh, people translate into this vipassana into English, spatial insight. But uh, in Tibet, we call it lakton. Uh, lakton means clerci. Actually, I like that better than special insight. So, whatever. Uh, also, how to meditate both uh, the shamatha and vipassana together or union, right? Um, that's the best. That's how you get enlightenment. You practice the union of shamatha and vipassana, then you will get enlightenment. Actually, just one single lifetime. Uh, uh, but first we have to meditate both of these separately, right? Uh, make sure you will get the, 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 uh, the final sort of experience of both of these shamatha and vipassana. So, um, and there is also talk about in his book, uh, The Middle Stage of Meditation, uh, awakening mind of bodhicitta and wisdom. Uh, we call these two bodhicitta and awakened mind, the, the wisdom, uh, our method of the method and wisdom. So it is because the bodhicitta mind is for working for the welfare of other sentient beings, right? And the wisdom mind is to understand how to meditate all these things. So that's why we call this, these are two methods. So these are the kind of foundation of the uh, Buddhist teaching and uh, aspect of the uh, Buddhist path to uh, enlightenment. So if you have a bodhicitta mind and a wisdom mind, uh, then you have the perfect view. All right, uh, bodhicitta and wisdom mind really important. Then, because of the the view, uh, very important. The perfect view, the perfect meditation, and also the perfect uh, conduct. You know, these three things depend on uh, bodhicitta and wisdom mind. Right. So then, uh, if you have those, then your spiritual path will. Perfect. There is a no mistaken way to lead you to, you know, wrong way. So, because you have a perfect view. I mean, perfect view means actually about the emptiness, all this, right? So, that's kind of sometimes people don't have a bodhicitta mind and wisdom mind. People misunderstand uh, how to practice about emptiness, misunderstand emptiness. So, that's why. Uh, they called Kamala Shila called these two are methods. Okay, so uh, uh, one thing that um, should be very clear is that uh, Dharma teachings uh, have only one purpose: uh, to sort of uh, discipline the mind, to train your mind, right? Buddha said that to discipline your mind completely uh, because this is the teaching of the Buddha. So that is the sort of the purpose, the main thing. And uh, if we say this, you might wonder that uh, the signs of a true Dharma practitioners are 
the real examination for a Dharma practitioner is if your uh, disturbing emotions are reduced, then your practice has been effective. That's the sign, right? Every negativity of uh, body, speech, and mind should be sort of correctly identified and its uh, antidotes fully understand. So with this sort of basic knowledge, uh, an, an individual should eliminate negative actions and practice uh, kindness and other virtuous deeds, of course. So that's we have to check all the time. Uh, you practice about Dharma, practice about Buddha Dharma, and then you check yourself um, what is the result. And this check also the negative, negative emotions. Your meditation is benefit or not? Um, we're not actually, we don't have to talk about how to get in enlightenment, all these things. I mean, that's kind of long term, but we have to think about just this moment with your life, right? With your, um, how to control uh, our minds when you sort of get really strong negative feelings, negative emotions, how to take care. Uh, usually, uh, you don't have to think about Buddha Dharma while you are happy, everything's good, good situation, nothing problem, you are happy, eh, that's good, right? Then, but Dharma, Buddha Dharma, you need to use uh, when you have difficult situation. This is kind of, uh, what do you call it? This is your um, antidote for your negative things. You know, toll box, how you call it. So uh, when you have difficult situation, really you have to think about your Buddha Dharma. Otherwise, useless. <coughs> you know, when, when you are not sick, you don't have to take medicine. When you, you, when you get sick, then you are thinking about the doctor. See the doctor, you are thinking about, uh, you know, medicines, right? That's the same. When you are happy, it's okay. If you can meditate, I'm sure when you are happy, you, are, you really like to meditate, right? But when you have difficult situation, you can't meditate, right? Because of the uh, strong negative emotion. So that's why. That's why the Buddha Dharma, this, that's why your meditation, that's the, for your meditation, I think. Very, very important. You should eliminate your negative emotions, negative actions, right? Just uh, when you have a difficult, just pause for a second. What's wrong with me? What is this? What is this situation? You just a little bit think about it. Just think about with your mindfulness. Then you will see all the circumstances. I mean, it's, it's change, you know. It's very, n no worry at all because you can change, you know. This everything is, according to Buddhism, everything is impermanence. You can, I mean, actually, you can change, but it will change, you know, automatically. So it's not, not, not for, you know, forever. If you have a difficult situation, then I also Shantan Deva said, why are you, you worried, worried a lot of your situation? Because there's no, uh, no need to worry. It really helps when you have difficult situation, if you, are medi if you meditate, meditate uh, Buddha Dharma. And uh, practice of Buddha Dharma means that we should be able to benefit from what we have heard. Uh, it is not like uh, listening, kind of like a story, right? It's not, this is not story. 
this, the teachings give us a sort of guidance on sort of how to uh, live meaningful life. That's not story. You just uh, uh, listen, but uh, you have to meditate. You have to apply the teachings and into your meditate practice, right? And how to develop a correct attitude, you know? Uh, so you understand that, right? Uh, we need to change um, as long as we are in this samsara, silly existence. We have uh, difficult uh, attitude and we have sort of difficult situation. That's, it's the, that's, the, that's the characteristic of the samsara, right? So. Um, there is, I always think, there is nothing perfect, right, while you are samsara. As long as you have <coughs> negative, negative emotions, attachment, anger, ignorance, jealous, all this negative, all we call afflictions, right? As long as you have this, then you are not perfect. So sometimes people worry that you are doing something is not really successful, then you think you are worried. Uh, this will be perfect. This will, I want this, you know, I want this will be perfect. But that's, that's wrong, you know. I mean, there, there's no perfect in this samsara until you get enlightenment. You get enlightenment, then everything is perfect because there is uh, no negative emotions. As long as we have uh, negative emotions, then we have something wrong all the time. So we have to reduce that. According to Buddhism, we can diminish that negative emotions. So that's why we meditate. That's the purpose of meditation, right? And now, how should we practice shamatha and vipassana? Uh, I'm going to give you some sort of idea or some characters of what necessary things when you uh, practice meditation about shamatha and vipassana in general. Uh, sometimes, okay, I will tell you this later, but so practice uh, shamatha and uh, vipassana are very important because they are the roots of all Buddhist meditation. Uh, Shamatha means peace, right? Shamatha means peace. Uh, this, uh, the, the, the peace means that the mind is not uh, distracted. Uh, it is because when the mind is overcome uh, with anger, sadness, or uh, whatever, uh, it becomes distracted, right? Everything is, goes wrong. Everything is wrong. But in shamatha, the meditation, the mind is very relaxed, right? And ease, without any sort of difficulties. If you really practice shamatha a lot, it takes at least like six months, definitely. If you practice a lot, like, for instance, every day, like... Um, maybe like 10 hours, and then you reach the final goal of the shamatha meditation, I think you will, it will take like six months. Uh, but we can't meditate uh, 10 hours a day, can you? So no, we can't, that's for sure. <laughs> Malaripa can. Malaripa actually, you know, um, meditate shamatha day and night, actually. I'm sure he slept a little bit, but... So he, uh, it, it took six months. So this is six months, uh, I don't know, maybe for you, or I don't know, if you practice shamatha every day, one hour, two hours, maybe I don't know, uh, your final, um, maybe five years. I don't know, it depends you, right? So, 
So then you get really, I mean, um, the, the shamatha first, meditation shamatha, is very important because um, the Buddha taught that the nature of mind is already at peace. Our nature mind already peace. It is already perfect, and it is empty. But at the same time, it also has a, uh, what do you call it, cognizant uh, quality. You know, in, you knows everything. I mean, you have a capacity. It has a capacity to know everything. The nature mind. I'm talking about nature mind. Okay, not. I'm not talking about relative mind. Okay. Mm. So this is the perfect nature mind, the capacity to uh, knowing everything. This is how the mind, nature, nature mind, you know, the mind nature actually is, always has been, always will be. You don't have to change that. That's always be. But in ordinary sentient beings, like us, does not recognize the mind's emptiness. Deep, uh, difficult to understand, that's for sure. And uh, the, 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 the cognizant, the, the quality, therefore we grasp and we cleanse, we, we create in the sort of confusion because of the uh, ignorance, because of the ignorance. Uh, ignorance is simply the lack of knowing the nature of mind. That's what we call ignorance. When you find yourself in a such situation, uh, instead of continuing to be confused and involved in, uh, in thoughts activity, simply um, relax intention, your, your attention. Um, that, is the, that is the practice of shamatha. Why you practice shamatha? Why? Because uh, you need peace mind. You need relaxed mind. Right? You uh, want, uh, I mean, shamatha meditation uh, helps support you uh, temporarily sort of uh, it is antidote for your negative emotions for temporarily. Uh, the union of Vipassana meditation, Shamatha meditation, is the, not temporarily. You practice both, then you can diminish your negative afflictions completely. So, that's why shamatha first, shamatha practice, very important. Uh, because by you train you in, in, in your mind sort of uh, uh, more and more relaxed and more and more calm. And then you will become more peaceful, that's for sure. And uh, thought activity will sort of uh, slowly, you know, what do you call it, Sub subside or diminish, slowly go away, right? So that there is a sort of growing sense of clarity and also stability. That's why it is important to have good foundation, shamatha practice, okay? So that is kind of very short, uh, the benefits of practice shamatha meditation. Uh, now, in this section of the morning, we will practice uh, just, just uh, you know, rest in meditation or relax in meditation or practice also we call it mindfulness because this practice makes your mind calm and peace. So we just got here, maybe uh, 
our mind and our body needs just to relax, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, not going to give you uh, lots of visualizations and, uh, uh, you know, investigations. No, just to relax and just to, you know, meditate. We should meditate uh, for a few minutes just to relax with your breath, you know. Uh, and uh, first of all, uh, I just told you, uh, you sit uh, very comfortable and, uh, and then you just uh, uh, breathe very calmly and just uh, naturally, you know. And uh, uh, you can't see the breath, but you can feel, right? When you breathe in and out, just naturally, calmly, then uh, I mean you can see. You cannot see the, the 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 breath, but you can feel something when you when you breathe in and out, right? You can feel something. Can you? That's kind of sensation. That's kind of feeling, uh, like can be can be inside inside the the nose. It can be, you know, hot of the, the, the sort of sensation or cold of the sensation. But there is a sensation there, you know. Uh, you just uh, concentrate um, on that very sort of settled sensation. And you just do uh, breathe in and out. So that's very simple, right? That's very simple. And, um, uh, but if you do that, you will see uh, that very soon the mind, you know, just to relax and uh, focus on breathe in and out. And then maybe you will see your mind maybe sort of distract or, uh, you know, your thoughts, uh, you know, just arise or something, you know. Uh, that's for sure for the beginners uh, when you practice shamatha. This is, I'm talking about shamatha, right? Just to relax and breathe in and out and focus on your sensation, your feeling. That's all for the beginners. Uh, and when your thoughts, your distract, disturbing emotions arises, um, uh, maybe, uh, you know, then what you what do you then what do you do? Do you, uh, maybe you? Uh, I mean, you should not think that. Oh, I'm sort of uh, here. My body is here, uh, but I'm completely sort of uh, unable to meditate, and um, I could not keep my mind more than few seconds, or you know. Uh, I can't watch my, my breath, you know. Sometimes really strong people, um, I don't know you, but you know, some people really, is, especially if you sit and just uh, focus on your breath, your other thoughts, very strong, you know. Then you sort of, uh, you know, uh, I'm not good meditator um, and this is not for me. Uh, looks like my, you know, uh, I have even more thoughts than the before, you know. I can't, I can't meditate. Mm -hmm. And then you sort of uh, given up your meditation. That's the problem for the beginners. I'm not talking about your beginners, but that's just, uh, you know, how, you know. Uh, but it's not really, you know, it, really you have more thoughts. You just, uh, you know, become fully aware of your concentration, right? Actually, so many thoughts going, uh, you know, on all the time, uh, but you just suddenly becoming aware of it, you know? That doesn't mean you have more thoughts than before when you meditate, but you aware of it. I mean, that's good things to know, right? Uh, so, if you find that uh, you have been distracted, um, then do not add more thoughts, which means do not follow your thoughts. And don't think, don't think in that you can't meditate. You know? 
So uh, the first time, uh, no matter, you know, everything, whatever you do, the first time is actually difficult. Not only meditate, meditation, you know. The first time, everything's uh, difficult because you are not familiar with it. So don't give up your, you know, meditation and don't lose your, uh, you know, confidence. Uh, the very fact that you, you become aware that you have been distracted means your mindfulness is come back. That means your mind is mindfulness come back. So simply just you know watching the breath and that's all. You just feel that you focus on the sensation. Okay? Uh, and you can watch the sensation on your nose. Uh, you could watch the sensation of your abdomen going sort of in and out. So whatever sensation can be associated with your breath, take it as your focusing and simply keeps your mind focused on that. Understand? If it is uh, sort of distracted, then uh, bring your mind back, you know. Uh, your mind is like, uh, you know, it's like a butterfly, you know. For example, you know, butterfly that is uh, sort of uh, on the flower, and then sometimes, you know, they uh, flew away, right? And then, then there is no reason, just they come back and stay on the flower. That's, that's the same. Your, you know, your mind... Uh, Sometimes you cannot focus and wander away, but there is no reason just to bring it back and focus on your own, own object. You have to do that very frequently, again and over again and again and again. Your mind wander away, bring back. Mind wander away, bring back. That's what we have to do. That's how you practice shamatha. You cannot practice shamatha you know, like for maybe five minutes, more than five minutes when you meditate shamatha because your thoughts and your, you know, your mind, your everything distract, you know, all these things, you know, cause your mind to wander away. But there's no worry there. No need to worry. Just to bring, make sure, bring it back. Recognize the thoughts, you know, aware of your thoughts. Uh, so, you know, that is the sort of experience of mindfulness, of sort of remaining in the present moment on an object of concentration that you have chosen, you know. It is good for you. I mean, mindfulness is so important, right? Mindfulness, in, uh, in Tibet we call it xi jin. Xi means knowing. Jin means awareness, and knowing one's own awareness. So mindfulness, right? So uh, that means when you meditate, your mind go away. Mindfulness. You need to recognize, oh, I have a thought. My mind is not here. Make sure it's to bring back. And try to, you know, focus on your breath. In, breathe in and out. And then do that so many times, okay? Do that so many times and then slowly, slowly your mind, you know, more and more stable, 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 you know. And then eventually you can practice shamatha without uh, distracted a day, two days, three days, one week, no problem. It is not a story, okay? It is not a story. It is really Really true. <laughs> you know, the great masters, great meditators, they have already this experience. You know, so it is, it is really true. So you can change. So you just do that for a um, few minutes. And... Uh, uh, Yep, we have 20 minutes.
and uh, you just need uh, sitting very comfortable. Um, so um, there, there is a seven point postures, but you don't have to do that. Just uh, comfortable. You can sit on cushion. You can sit on chair. Make sure your back straight. That's kind of important because your energies, you know, uh, goes with channels. So you have a back straight, your channels will be very straight. And then you can focus on more. And then uh, this section, I just uh, give you very simple meditation, okay? Uh, this is good for beginners and good for advanced students, both. So just uh, uh, relax and then you just uh, breathe in and out. You don't have to any visualizations. Just uh, focus on your breath, your sensation, your feeling. Whenever you have that feeling in your body, just to make sure your mind, you know, mindfully and peace. Yeah. Deep, very deep breathe, breath, breathe. Deep breath, and then correct your motivation for a second. I'm going to meditate, peace and relax, benefit all sentient beings and myself. People are very crazy in this world. They have a peace, they don't have peace mind. They don't have relaxation. So you're going to practice for them. Of course, for you. So for a second, correct your motivation. Whatever good things happen in this meditation, good for others, good for you. And once you correct your motivation, then breathe in very slowly, calmly, naturally. You don't have to change anything when you breathe in and out as usual, how you breathe in and out. And then breathe out. Make sure you recognize, you understand that you breathe in. And out. Breathe in. And out. Do not think your past situation <coughs> either good or bad. Just let it go. Make sure your mind relax. Do not think in your future situation. Just let it go. Make sure you focus on this moment.
relax. Bring your mind back. If it is difficult to bring your mind back, then you need very deep breath. Very deep breath. According to Kamala Shila's book, when you meditate like that, 20 minutes, after that, then you, you should a little bit investigate about your meditation. Was it good? Are lots of thoughts? Are your body comfortable? You just a little bit, you have to a little bit uh, investigate. <coughs> and then after that, if you have a good meditation, then you dedicate that merit right away. And then you take a break. <laughs> right? All right. Is it good? Peace? Relax. In Buddhi, uh, Buddhism, <laughs> there are lots of meditations, right? Um, but I like this the best. I like focus on my breath. That's the best. Very easy, simple, and also very profound meditation. Easily your mind bring back and easily focus on your breath. That's why I like it. So now take a break and then come back. We'll uh, teach more and meditate more.